All right, hey everyone, and welcome back to the 90 days challenge. Today, we are talking about the mission number nine, where we're going to discuss about uh, how do we start automatically deploying on Kubernetes with Argo CD. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice, I've not been feeling very well for the last few days, but um, you know, I'll try to give you the maximum value out of this session though. So welcome everyone. I see Deepak, uh, I see Giri, Ravindra, Hemant, and uh, you know a few more people. Naga, Sai. Uh, we have Sai Natha, Cedric. So thank you for joining this session on time, and uh, welcome to this ninety days challenge again. Today we will be talking about how do we deploy automatically set up deployment with Argo CD, and let's just recap all the missions so for, we have completed so far. Starting with uh, missions on containers, first two weeks. Then we talked about how do we set up automatic, you know, like branching models and workflows with Git. Set up automatic, you know, CI pipelines with uh, Jenkins. Uh, we spent a couple of weeks on cloud, then with Terraform, then talked about Kubernetes last week. And this week we are back with Argo CD. Argo CD is just extension of what Kubernetes offers, and it helps you set up an automatic continuous delivery deployment kind of a workflow on top of Kubernetes. That is what Argo CD is all about. So uh, once again, welcome everyone that I see. I see, um, so hey, Hemant, Ravindra, Monica, Cedric, Drupat, uh, and um, let's get started. So uh, you can find the chat either on, you know, when it gets recorded, it's on this side. But when I see it, it's on this side of mine. So I'm not sure which one do you see there, but you'll find the chat and the Q&A section. So chat you're already using. You can also feel free to use Q&A and start adding your questions. And uh, you know, basically you can continue doing that. I'll get to the questions whenever I can. Uh, Ravindra has a, you know, puts it on the chat. Do not send the private chat messages. I would request again, uh, Ravindra has a, you know, comment, could you please provide earlier session links? Um, you don't have to call me Mr. Gaurav. Uh, you can just say Gaurav, that should be sufficient. And all the previous recordings are available on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, that is Cool Up DevOps. And uh, you will find the playlist out here by name 90 Day DevOps Challenge. I'm going to share the link to the 90 Day DevOps Challenge playlist. And it has all eight previous session recordings. So this is the playlist. Do subscribe to this channel as well if you haven't already. And as you can see, it has right from mission number one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh is, uh, uh, oh, somehow it is missing. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, the display setting is what I need to change. We talked about it last week. I uh, have not done it yet, but I'll do that. So you'll find all the recordings out there. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, all right, so let's get started with today's agenda. We are talking about Argo CD. Argo CD is an implementation of GitOps. GitOps was the word coined by VWorks, uh, which created a software called as Flux CD. So Argo CD and Flux CD are two of the options that you have in the market, uh, especially when you're talking about automatically deploying your application on top of Kubernetes. This is the Flux CD, and then we have Argo. Argo has a suite of tools. One of that is Argo CD. Argo CD is one of the four or five tools that it comes with. The complete suite of Argo's, uh, Argo tools include Argo rollouts, Argo CD, Argo workflow, Argo events. Uh, there are a few additional things like Argo image updater and whatnot, but uh, uh, Argo CD is what we are going to talk about today. And you will see an automated deployment with a graphical interface that you see uh, such as this, right? Now, what is Argo CD all about? It helps you set up an automated continuous deployment on top of Kubernetes using the principles of GitOps. So to understand Argo CD, you need to understand the four principles of GitOps. The implementation of GitOps also revolves around it. What are the four principles of GitOps? Let's start with that. <clears throat> the first principle is write everything as code. So 100% declarative configurations. It says write everything as a code using the YAML manifest. That's what you do with Kubernetes actually. 
with Kubernetes, you write everything as a code and you basically write everything as a manifest and everything is an API resource. So you basically can automate everything with Kubernetes. So that's the first principle of GitOps. The second principle is what you do with, uh, let's say, uh, what do you do once you have written this as a code is you start revision controlling it as well, right? So um, revision controlling is, uh, uh, just give me one quick moment. I, I have a message that I need to reply on. Somebody wants to join this session. All right. So once you've written the code, you start revision controlling it. That is in Git, right? Now, what do you do here is the principle number three says you set up, it says it reads apply approved changes automatically. But essentially what are we talking about is how do we set up that approval process? That is where you implement the branching models. Like we have talked about in the mission number uh, three, I believe when we talked about Git, with mission number three, that's what we did. Implemented a trunk based development model, implemented the branching policies, locked down the master branch, created or enforced everything through the feature branches. And we allowed changes to be brought into the main line or the release branches only via the pull request, right? So that is approval process. So the uh, principle number three says, apply approved changes automatically that indicates or that is pointing to the setting up of the Git based workflow. And that is how GitOps comes in. So GitOps is all about operations out of Git. So based on the Git based workflows, right? So <clears throat> the principle number four says, once you have, you know, approved changes should be automatically applied. How the how part is where you say, uh, principle number says, <clears throat> check and correct with a software agent. This is where Argo CD comes in. This is where Flux CD comes in. This is where any of your agents come in. So your agents are the tools, the GitOps tools, which sit in your one of the clusters and it looks at the changes in a specific branch in the Git. And based on that, it implements or applies it, or you just say check, or you say check and apply either of that using a software agent. Those are the four principles of GitOps. So start writing code, start revision controlling it, set up Git based workflows, and then have an agent such as Argo CD to implement or to deploy to the Kubernetes environment specifically. Even though GitOps can apply to everything else as well, uh, specifically, especially in Kubernetes, everything can be automated. Everything is an API resource. Everything can be codified. So uh, GitOps, when you talk about it, more specifically, it is about Kubernetes based deployment with either Argo CD or Flux CD. Argo also has a different set of tool, to a suite of tools, right? So you have Argo rollouts, Argo workflows, Argo events. And what we are talking about is just one specific part of it, which helps you set up the automated deployment. So whatever you have in the Git repository, you just want to apply the manifest specifically in this case, you want to apply to a Kubernetes environment with a tool, right? So uh, I will remove my video from the tool so that uh, you can see the screen, not me. I did the opposite. All right. Let me start sharing my screen and stop my video. I believe that's better <clears throat> so that you can actually see what's going on. So what I have here is uh, uh, on the left hand side, I have a Kubernetes environment already created, set up with a tool called as kind. We've spoke, spoken about that last week and you see kubectl get nodes, kubectl uh, get pods. So this is a Kubernetes environment already set up with a bunch of pods running uh, a bunch of, you know, you know, nodes also been set up there as well. And what we want to do here on top of this is set up Argo CD uh, so that we can start deploying the code, the manifest uh, to the Kubernetes environment that you see on the right as well, the visualized, visualized environment for Kubernetes there. Now, 
<clears throat> how do I set up Argo CD is where I'm going to extend the features of Kubernetes to which helps me set up this application automated deployments and stuff like that, right? The way it works typically with Kubernetes is you implement the custom resources, you implement certain controllers, and you, then you have certain custom resources to go along with it, right? Now, what does that mean is, uh, let me open my whiteboard and start explaining to you. So we typically have features such as our uh, primitives such as deployments and replica sets and stateful sets and daemon sets. All of those are managed by some controller. So you write a manifest, let's say a deployment.yaml, right? You write a manifest for that. And then there is a controller manager listening to your resource that you've written, invoked or written. And based on that, it goes and creates the actual set of pods, the deployments and so on. So similarly, if you want to in this case, create an application deployment, you will create a custom resource as a user. And then to make that work, you need two components inside Kubernetes environment. One is the controller. Second is a custom resource. Custom resource definition. In this case, a resource will be called as an application. And using that, you write your code where your code is going to say, hey, my kind is equal to, let's say, application. Right. And when you define that kind of a uh, object, you are essentially, essentially creating a instance of a custom resource definition, because this is a, this is not a resource that Kubernetes provides by default. It's a custom resource that is an application. So there is a resource definition in Kubernetes. Along with that, there is a controller and that controller will go and deploy that for you. That is the actual implementation of how Kubernetes works actually, right? So how do we go about setting up Argo CD? In this case, the controller is going to be the Argo CD. Custom resource is going to be the application. And then we create a resource or a custom resource definition is application and we create a resource out of it, which is then used by Argo CD to implement, to set up the automated deployments here. So how do I set up Argo CD is I'll create a namespace for it called as Argo CD. And then within that namespace, so I'll start watching that namespace here. Called as Argo CD. There's nothing right now. And within that namespace, I will implement Argo CD controller along with the custom resource. <clears throat> if I run get CRDs, there are no custom resources right now. Remember that I just deployed Argo CD now. And this Argo CD will set up the custom resources along with the controller. So there are custom resource definitions for the application, right? There's application, application set and the project. So you also see some pods being created and you see the pods listed here. Those are part of the Ergo CD controller. And then that has created a custom resources, CRDs in the form of applications. Now you can write the definition of an application like how i want to deploy basically what you're going to write here is argo cd has come up by the way what you're going to write is how i want to deploy the application uh at what interval where is the source that is git repository because we're talking about git ops so the code has to be there in the git repository and you're going to say that this is my source this is the cluster this is the namespace i want to deploy to this whatever code i see here I'm going to go and deploy to that. And then you can do it for different environments or different clusters as well. That is the application resource that you will write. Just that we will not write it using YAML. We'll do it through the UI, right? Now, before I start doing that, I will have to uh, make sure that I'm able to access my Argo CD. So I'm setting up a few things. What is a password? 
second is uh, i'm patching the service so that the service is exposed as a node port we're talking about the argo server argo cd server it is cluster ip service you can see that here and when i patch it this changes to node port and starts listening on port number 32100 so 32100 with https is where i should see argo cd running So this is Argo CD already running. Now, what do I do is I want to deploy. What do I want to deploy? This is my, I mean, this is where I'm going to start creating my application configuration from. Uh, what do I want to deploy? I want to deploy some manifests to the Kubernetes environment. Where do I want to deploy from is Git hub repository or Git repository, because when we talk about GitOps, it is operations out of Git. So you need a Git repository. You need your code, a code to be there as well. And you can do it for different environments as well. So I'm going to demonstrate that for two different environments. One is a staging, second is a production environment. So first thing first is I need code. So you write everything as a code. It's already been done. Now you take that code and put it on Git. That's what I'm doing. I'm just forking this repository so that I can make changes and show it to you as well later. So I'm creating a fork of the code repository. <coughs> where I have uh, the code in the form of a customization. This is where my code exists. So this is where you'll see the deployment and service. So it's going to be one application for which I'll create a deployment. And this is going to deploy with this particular image, right? Four replicas and uh, what else? You know, it creates a service of type node port and starts listening on port number 30,300. That's what I have as part of my code. But if you look at the code, it has been organized this way where you have base repository and then you have prod and staging. So this seems to have some configuration for production and staging. And then there is a base repository here. You also see a file name customization, which is calling that code deployment and service actually. So what is this, what is it, the way it has been organized and the tool that is being used here is called as customize. <clears throat> so how do we manage the manifest and create custom configuration so that we can apply the code to different environments is what we are talking about here. And for that, there are two tools. One is customize. What is the other tool that you have used or you've seen being used? The other tool is the most popular one. I personally like customize because it's simple and it's intuitive. It works very well. No learning curve, very little learning curve for with customize. The other tool is a four letter word and using that you can also manage manifest, but there you use templates and properties. That should give you enough of pointers. What is the name of the other tool? A four letter word, most popular when it comes to managing the manifest. And if you want to deploy something to Kubernetes, that's what you typically rely on. Anyone, you can put it in the chat if you know the tool name. Okay, now I'm disappointed. None of you know the tool, that's very surprising. So the other tool name is, um, of course, the four letter word starting with H is HEM. HEM is another way of managing your manifest and creating customized configuration for different environments and so on, right? The other tool is the uh, customize. Why I like customize is because with HEM, you have to learn a new templating language and the code gets a bit complex as well there. Whereas customizations are very simple, you just create base configuration and then whatever you want to override, do it from specific directories like customizations like this, right? So for example, 
this is my base configuration this is my staging this is my prod what i want to override is this is my deployment.yaml i'm going to override not everything but from this deployment i am overriding only the replica account so in staging i run two in prod i run six in prod i have maybe a volume that i want to change as well everything else otherwise remains similar so the only properties that you need to change you override it from staging and prod so let's say we have a base and we have uh, service.yaml let's look at the node port node port by default is 30300 deployment has four replicas let's just focus on that now what do we do is from staging what we are saying here is okay bring in the code from base apply it with my replicas count and then uh, the service name is uh, what we are patching so service is what we are patching so service is where we create uh, override where we say oh node port 30300 for staging <coughs> it could have been something else in my base also and in prod i'm going to say 30400 node port 30400 and then replicas would be uh, slightly different in prod i have let's say four in staging i might have two uh, something like that yeah so those are the two values two properties we are overriding how do we override we create a base configuration we import it in the staging and prod and then we override only the specific things by creating the same structure so customizations are much simpler than hem when it comes to customizing the properties so i have already created a copy of this so my code exists here principle number one write everything as a code that's been done we assume that in the form of this manifest principle number two is start revision controlling it right so whatever you write you start putting it on git we've done that principle number three is apply approved changes automatically so we can set up approval process here saying that oh nothing goes in main main is protected and then uh, you need to bring changes only via the branches and then you create another branch for prod let's say if i want to create another branch i can for prod um, and then locked it down and so on so we're not getting into that part right now uh, we already talked about how do we set up the branching models and so on right now i just want to focus on argo cd and assuming that it is already there i will demonstrate to you how i would create the staging and the production configuration so i'm creating an application for staging deployment for staging okay remember this is a custom resource that i would be end up creating so if i say kubectl get applications applications is a resource this resource is being watched by the controller that is argo cd and based on that it will automatically set up the deployment for staging and for production okay that's what it's gonna do now let me add the configuration that is required here my git repository is uh, somewhere here i'll just keep it available for my configurations currently i don't have any applications no resources by name applications yet anywhere in the cluster let me create the deployment configuration this is my git repository i'm copying over the code i go back here i'll start configuring everything very quickly so i'm deploying the vote application in staging environment so vote staging a default project you can create a project to organize if you have a lot of deployments or applications you can create a project to organize it i want it to automatically sync as in whenever there's a change it detects in a git repository it will automatically apply <coughs> repository url is this that's my git repository from where from the main branch head path is what path is staging staging is what i want to apply so whatever is in the staging directory if i go to staging and run customization i will get that code actually if i go to prod i'll get that a specific code if i go to base there'll be a specific code for base let me show you that how that works
So this has uh, uh, these three directories and I believe I have customized installed or I don't. Okay. Let me install customize in the same place where I have cloned my code at or I would. All right, I have customized installed cloning my code. If I use customize build base, you see it looks at the customization.yaml and accordingly it will build the manifest. So whatever is there in the base directory, the deployment with four replicas, uh, version is v1, that's still there. If I build staging, it looks up the base and then it overrides whatever it needs to like these annotations are overridden the replicas count is overridden the port uh, is same because base and staging have same but if you look at prod this is what gets applied to prod four replicas and a different port and then a lot of different things added for prod so that's how the customizations work actually so what do I want to do here is apply the code from staging and prod uh, for the respective environments. So my cluster URL is going to be this. I would need a namespace. So in onto my cluster, I'm going to create two namespaces, one called a staging, second called as prod. Okay, I'll start watching for both. So group CTL, get all in staging. and uh, group CTL, get all for prod. Okay, so I'm applying it to the staging environments in the same cluster to the namespace staging. So whatever the code is in the staging uh, path of that repository gets applied to staging environment. So when I create and apply, you are going to see that happen exactly that same thing. Right, it's going to start deploying to the staging environment. You see that uh, here, it started creating the deployment, etc. Yeah, and then deployment and service starts launching the pods. The deployment starts launching the pod and service directs the traffic to it. And that is what is happening right now. Only for the staging environment, not to the prod. And it created two replicas, 30,300 port, everything that I wanted, just like what I wanted. And this is going to launch the set of pods, uh, which should come up in a few seconds. <coughs> it shows everything here that it has created. Set of pods, a couple of pods. There are different diagrams. This is a network diagram. Service going through the pods. This is where the pods are on two different nodes kind worker one and two and this is all the resources that got created including the deployment and the service and the endpoints and the replica set that deployment creates that manages the pods and that sort of explains to you uh, how and what works here right how it is working and that's why Argo is very useful because Argo gives you this graphical representation of how things are happening so it comes with a nice intuitive UI and at this time if I run get applications I'm going to see one in Argo CD namespace uh, for this vote hyphen staging. And if I show you this, get applications in uh, the Argo CD namespace, vote staging minus a YAML, you are going to see the resource with the same uh, kind of a structure. Look at this part. 
forget about the status and everything, right? So AKMS, just like a Kubernetes resource, uh, API version is different. Kind is application. There's metadata and the spec contains what? The source. Where is the source? That is the Git repository. What is the destination, the cluster name and the namespace? And the sync policy, should it be automatically done or not? And so on. That's what it is there, right? So that's what you have. And that's what allows you to set up this automated deployment to a specific environment in a specific, you know, cluster and so on. And that is what this Argo CD helps you do. So I've created an environment for uh, staging and prod and I have the code for both as well. So let me deploy to the prod environment using the same strategy, uh, another application where I say vote prod and the project name and uh, the policy to sync which git repository, the source. I'm defining the source configuration now, same repository, different path. This could have been a different branch. Let's say a lot of times in GitOps, you create a different branch like release and you want to deploy from that branch. You can do that here by changing the revision saying to branches. You can also define a particular tag that you want to deploy as well. Keeping it the same branch, but a different path that is prod, same cluster, namespace is prod and that's it. That's really it. That's it. With this much, it is going to go and deploy to my prod environment right here in the bottom, right? And that's where it creates the application. This is a uh, staging. This is the prod environment, which is currently syncing. Created a bunch of things here. It's launching the pods, which you should see being created here as well four pods they've been launched not yet ready but the replica set is doing its job it would eventually have let's say four pods running in the prod environment that is what you are supposed to see uh, why it's not deploying and all that uh, it's probably because of the resource constraints and the resources not being available to that environment and that's probably the reason why it's not being deployed to it but you do see it has done it so far, uh, created it so far, and my cluster has gone down actually. So it's because of, uh, I have created a very small, tiny little server for this, and uh, that's why it's not able to take that much, this much of a load actually. And that's the reason why this Argo CD itself, along with this entire cluster, is already down of sorts. But you do see the difference here, right? So you see the staging environment has two replicas. The prod is supposed to run four, and it would eventually, if I uh, make sure my cluster is up and running, fine. And once I have everything set up, configured properly. Now that is how Argo CD really works, right? So Argo CD allows you to create deployments and sets up this automated deployment based on the Git-based workflows. Everything else you can drive through Git. Uh, so, you know, what changes go to the prod? Uh, you can keep it in a different branch. You can lock down that branch and release branch typically and create a pull request between the main branch and the release branch so that it gets applied to the prod environment. And only when you really want it to apply to the prod environment, will it do that, right? So that's how uh, Argo CD works. And that's how the deployment really works. I could have shown you a few versions of it, uh, but this environment is a bit done with actually <clears throat> because of the resources not being there so i'll have to reset it or create a new environment to make uh, demonstrate it and uh, i'm not going to do that right now uh, i just wanted to show you this basically and then a little more but uh, that little more will skip uh, as part of it right now but this is how you go about uh, deploying to uh, kubernetes and setting up the automated deployment with something like argo cd now what else is there from Argo? Argo CD, is it all about just this part? No. Uh, Argo has a suite of tools where if you use rollouts, you can also define or create blue-green and canary releases beyond what is offered by the inbuilt Kubernetes deployments. Kubernetes deployments don't support the canaries and blue-green 
by default you'll have to make it work or you can use ago rollouts to do that where you can also run some automated experiments uh, collect the monitoring data define the step by step how uh, this rollout happens and so on and uh, you can also do that basically with ergo rollouts ergo events and ergo workflows are the two combination of tools that you can use to set up automated workflows anything right from creating continuous integration environments to running your bad jobs maybe some sort of uh, data processing jobs like machine learning pipelines and whatnot and you can automate that and trigger those based on certain events using ergo events actually ergo workflow helps you automate things ergo events sets up the sensors that get triggered when something happens like a git a hook or a s3 object or maybe a stream being uh, you know getting a, uh, getting some data there or some notification or something which changes in kubernetes resources so it triggers an event and based on that event it can trigger a workflow within kubernetes using ergo workflows as well so you can use a combination of all of this and i'm actually building a course on this all of these ergo uh, cd ergo workflows ergo rollouts etc and uh, that for that i already have the labs built also so if you want to try those out you can uh, as part of this ergo it's actually kubernetes tutorial so it's kubernetes tutorial has a lot of other components now uh, linked to ergo all of this uh, then eks that is kubernetes on um, ec2 kubernetes service managed service and so on i've just shared this link to the uh, you know to this basically with you are there any questions with ergo cd or gitops that uh, you want me to address otherwise we will wrap up a little early today uh, ergo is a simpler topic anyways so we wanted to wrap up a little early and that's what we would do unless there are any uh, further questions and next week we are going to take up another topic that is about how do we set up monitoring uh, where i will demonstrate again that will be a smaller topic very quickly done and that would be about setting up something like prometheus and grafana uh, with kubernetes and uh, setting up maybe monitoring and maybe i can if time permits i'll show you some auto scaling related to that as well uh, based on the monitoring and uh, custom metrics and so on and uh, that's what we would take up uh, for the next week Yes, Cedric, you can ask questions related to Kubernetes as well. Um, you can ask questions related to Argo or Kubernetes both. A question from Hemant is, Argo CD is open source. This is only for cloud native. Uh, yes, it is for cloud native Kubernetes uh, native actually. And it is open source, Argo CD is. It is a CNCF project. So it was created, uh, um, you know, by an organization which got, I think, into it, acquired it. As far as I understand, and uh, it became part of Intuit. Intuit is the one which created Argo CD, but then it became uh, they open sourced it, of course, and now it is part of CNCF. So Argo CD is a open source project completely. Absolutely yes, and it is for Kubernetes specific. So it is Kubernetes native deployment application. All right, uh, Cedric, if you have a question related to screen sharing, uh, you can, uh, we can connect it or connect on that on Thursday session. So Thursday we have the Zoom calls and during the Zoom calls, we can take up those questions. Let me check if I can uh, make you a presenter here though. All right, for those of you who are completely new and would like to get started with the 90 day challenge, uh, we have the recordings available already. But any assignments and the courses related to it and you, you want to get access to all of our courses we do have the membership uh, and we do have provide the offer during the sessions and uh, the structure is going to change so this is the best time to get a membership uh, with the yearly passes and i'm just presenting that offer to you on the screen so in case if you are interested in uh, getting started with your devops mastery journey and get access to all the entire library of our courses, you can uh, avail this at a good discount. Okay, Cedric has uh, described the questions. Every time I reboot my Kubernetes cluster, I always get this error. Memcache couldn't get current server. Um, looks like an issue connecting to Kubernetes server 
I'm not sure why it has this memcache related message, but looks like it has a problem connecting to your Kubernetes server. Uh, so what are the things that you may want to look at is your configuration, your context. For example, currently I may get the same, uh, same kind of a message. In my case, the cluster is not responding. So it's not even responding. It's not even, it's just says uh, handshake timeout. That's what it's going to say eventually. Uh, but if you do not see the access to it, you check config get context. Make sure your context is correct. You're connecting to the correct cluster using the correct user and looking at the correct namespace. And you look at the configuration in typically in dot kube config file. This is where your cluster configuration is. So this is my authentication data. This is my um, user information. The users is given. This is the user. This is my cluster information. This is my cluster. So ensure that your API server is actually up and running. It is pointing to the correct host, the configuration, and you have the correct user and uh, cluster name also. So config get context will help you figure out what is your current context. Along with that, look at the config uh, file in .co. That should help you uh, figure this out a little better. Better. If not, you come back on Thursday. We'll have a look at that. Naga Prasad has a question. Does Jenkins also have Argo CD functionality? So no, uh, you can integrate with any CI platform, including Jenkins with Argo. Jenkins is not a CD tool. It's a continuous integration tool. Um, so you can't compare Jenkins and Argo CD. You know, these are not apple to apple, right? So it's apple to oranges. So what you can do though is integrate CI with CD. How do you typically do that is, uh, Typically, the way I would integrate this is, let's say I'm running a container-based uh, workflows and there is a change to Git repository. This is my source code. And whenever that happens, I trigger a continuous integration workflow. That could be build, test. You know, you run different tests here. Package, maybe you package this as a container image if you are running this as a container and you trigger this based on the changes to Git, commits to Git. To a particular branch now let's say as a result of this you're publishing an image to a registry and there was a version one and now you have version two here now when that happens what you can do is uh, with argo cd you want to trigger deployment to staging and then from there maybe a manual deployment to prod let's say i want to follow a continuous delivery not continuous deployment so deploy to prod deploy to staging <clears throat> maybe run some tests in between also so what i can do is there is a tool called as ergo image updater you will have a, another git repository where you have kubernetes manifests deployment manifest like our word deploy where you have base prod stage whatever i showed you right so whenever there's a new image added you can have an ergo image updater run that or detect it and it will update your manifest code. It will update code like this, actually. It'll update, go and update code here, and it will patch it automatically, your deployment.yaml, and it will patch your image, and uh, that will trigger your Argo CD uh, workflows, actually. It will automatically trigger the workflows. You know that already, right? So that's what you can do. Uh, in, if I have or not, you know, already have the code where this has happened, I will show it to you also. Just checking in. Yeah, you can see there is an automatic update of vote staging. That is actually an uh, automatic commit made by Argo image updater. You can see that that's the author. Uh, so it's an automatic commit, something like this. So it automatically updates the image with whatever the version that you have, uh, you have built and deployed to your uh, repository. And based on this, it will trigger the deployment to staging. And then once this is done, 
you can uh, set up a workflow where there is a main branch and then there is a release branch and you commit the changes or raise a pull request so that this goes to uh, release branch and whenever that happens you deploy to prod so this is like a manual intervention between this and then you click a button and then uh, it goes to prod staging automatically prod by pull request uh, so you can set up this kind of a workflow and integrate ci any ci system with cd so here you can have jenkins you can have tecton you can have circle cd you can have other workflows uh, or you can have any other uh, continuous integration system in the world it will just work that's how you can integrate Argo CD with any continuous integration systems. What a CI system misses is it doesn't have this automated uh, ability to deploy this here. And especially with Argo, Argo rollouts actually, you can also do uh, canaries and blue greens and all those kind of things. And uh, you have a CD system which deploys automatically. And then using rest of the configuration, you can create a very, very sophisticated deployment workflow out there. All right. Any other question anyone has about Argo CD, about CI CD, anything related to that as well? If not, we will wrap up in a, uh, in two minutes from now. Okay, I think Cedric has a question, persistent question. I think this is going to be about uh, configuration, figuring it out. And if you look at this configuration, you most likely will be able to figure it out on your own. Yeah, if not, uh, Thursday sessions are um, for members. So if you are a member of a community, you can join the Thursday session and uh, you can post questions, ask questions and uh, get the guidance as well. That's when we do the group coaching there. All right. If any if one of you are not members, I would recommend you to join the School of DevOps membership. That will help you benefit. Uh, dive deeper into the world of DevOps and really master it, right? Beyond uh, just certifications, beyond just, you know, theoretical knowledge, it will definitely help you dive deeper into the world of DevOps. Uh, with that, we will conclude our session uh, to, for today. So thank you, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Next week is going to be our last module, the last mission that's about uh, monitorizing and we will be wrapping up our 90 day challenge as well. Thank you and bye bye.